So in this video, I'm going to talk about this GameRock RTX 1590 graphics card from Palette. It is actually the first partner card that I managed to get my hands on, and it is the first model that I will be comparing to the Founders Edition from NVIDIA that I reviewed before. So let's see how it performs and uh, what should we expect from this card. Let's begin. The name of this model is not that new, as some of you might know. Uh, Palette's GameRock GPUs had some of the most noticeable designs that we've seen over the last couple of years, and this 50 series version is not an exception. It has a very shiny, very RGB heavy shroud, uh, with its colors shifting depending on the angle you're looking at it, uh, which Palette calls a chameleon panel. So it is needless to say that this card would work really well in a vertical orientation. The other sides of the card are a bit more conventional. Uh, the side is mostly black with the GameRock logo that lights up and on the back it has a nice black metal backplate with one gap for the airflow. Size-wise this is a relatively large card that is 32 centimeters long, 15 centimeters deep, 7 centimeters or three and a half slots thick, but it is not excessively large and it should still fit most mid-tower cases on the market. The build quality of this card stands out as well. It has a metal frame all around it which looks great, feels sturdy, and it definitely adds more stability. Uh, the shroud around the fans is plastic, but the quality of that plastic is good and the GPU as a whole uh, just feels like a well-built product overall. Feature-wise, you get a dual BIOS and a bunch of RGB, as I said at the start, and you can control that RGB with a regular addressable RGB cable that you connect next to the 12 volt 2x6 power connection. And the addressable RGB cable is included along with a power cable adapter and a GPU holder. On the back of the card, you get three DisplayPort 2.1B connections and a single HDMI 2.1B, so it is the same as on the Founders Edition. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the RTX 5090 chip in this video, since uh, I covered it fully in my Founders Edition review. Uh, so if you want to check that one out, I'm gonna leave a link in the description box down below. Uh, but to summarize, uh, the RTX 5090 offers a significant performance upgrade over the uh, RTX 4090, and in 45 games I tested, it ended up about 28% faster at 4K resolution and about 16% faster at 1440p. It doesn't really have any competition on the market just yet, uh, but if you're wondering, it is about 72% faster than AMD's fastest card at 4K resolution, and that's before taking all of Nvidia's extra features into account. So basically, this card is meant to get you that extra bit of performance you might want for uh, 4K 120 or 4K 240 Hz gaming, or super high refresh rate uh, 1440p gaming. It is a significant upgrade if you look at the general workstation performance as well as uh, AI performance. That being said, it is also a very power-hungry GPU using up to 575 watts, uh, and I do expect that some versions will even use more than that. So if you go for a 5090, make sure you have a decent quality power supply of uh, 1000 watts or more, or 1200 watts or more if you're planning to pair it with a really high-powered CPU as well. Now, if we compare this palette version to the NVIDIA's Founders Edition, uh, there is almost nothing between them uh, when it comes to gaming performance. The palette is sometimes marginally faster, uh, about a frame ahead in Black Myth Wukong, for example, and sometimes it is a fraction slower, like in Cyberpunk 2077, for example. And keep in mind that these two games were tested using the highest uh, fully path rate settings without upscaling to just properly stress the GPU. But while actually playing these games, at these settings, I would personally enable upscaling and maybe even frame generation to get higher frame rates and just a smoother experience. Memory clocks are exactly the same on both models, so neither card uses overclocked memory, and on average, the palette ended up having slightly higher clock speeds than the Founders Edition, uh, beating it by about 1%. Now that is something you will never notice while gaming, so functionally, they are equally fast. The palette does have a slightly lower power consumption, but without more cards to test just yet, it is just hard to say if this is a sample variant or if Nvidia's very unique PCB design just uses a bit more power. 
Now, when it comes to idle use, uh, I saw that some people were reporting that the 5090 was using about 40 watts in idle, uh, but in my setup, uh, both of these 5090 models used about 25 watts in idle. Now, that is still a bit higher than I expected to see in general, but uh, between these two 5090s, there was no meaningful difference. But there are definitely some differences when it comes to thermals and noise. So in its default performance BIOS, the Palette Game Rock model ran a bit cooler than the Founders Edition, and it kept its memory cooler as well. It was doing that with very similar, only just slightly higher fan noise, uh, even though that is still far from what I would call loud. And looking at these numbers, I wouldn't mind to hear actually a bit more fan noise to get the thermals even lower. Most importantly, uh, this model did not have any coil wine at all, uh, unlike the Founders Edition we tested. Since this is a dual BIOS card, you do have the option to go for the quieter profile instead, but uh, it seems like Palette had taken the gigabyte approach here, uh, making both BIOS options basically the same performance-wise. And in my opinion, if a card offers a second BIOS, uh, that BIOS should at least offer some kind of a uh, meaningful difference, either to make it actually quieter or to use it for an OC mode. Anyway, considering uh, how much power this design has to deal with, Palette's results and balance between noise and thermals are actually objectively good in both biases. So overall, I think the Game Rock is a really nice RTX 5090 option. It is a bit thicker than the Founders Edition, but if your case can fit it, that doesn't really matter much. It is well built, it offers better thermals at a similar noise level, plus the palette only has one flow through part, so it won't blow hot air at your air cooler or CPU area in general, uh, like the Founders Edition does. So depending on your setup, uh, this traditional design can make more sense. But I think that the main selling point of this card would be its shiny and noticeable RGB heavy design, and that especially so if you plan on mounting this card vertically. Uh, just keep in mind that this is a Gen 5 card and you will need a riser that can handle that properly. Now, I haven't had a chance to test any Gen 5 risers just yet, so uh, please do look out for some testing results before, uh, with any 5090 before going for that option. And while this design might not be for everyone, I do have to say that I do appreciate that Palette is doing something different and something that it stands out a bit more from the rest. Unfortunately, I have no information on how much this card will cost you just yet. Uh, the availability of all 50 series cards is just a disaster at the moment. And there are actually some other brands that are listed for ridiculous prices, but I could not find any listings for any of the Palette models. Now, if you look at previous generations, uh, this card should be cheaper than some of the higher end models from Asus, MSI and Gigabyte. And keep in mind, uh, to justify their price premium, those cards would have to be noticeably faster, cooler, or quieter, and that was not always the case in previous generations. But I'm actually expecting to get my hands on a couple of more models and then hopefully uh, make a nice roundup of all cards side by side so we can see uh, how they compare to each other. That being said, uh, if you're looking to buy an RTX 5090, you might have to pick whatever is available uh, rather than the exact model and design you might have hoped for. But either way, uh, if this is the model that you wanted or it is the only model that's available in your region, it is a very good GPU and it is a GPU definitely worth considering. Uh, that's all I have for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new gaming monitor, the Xenion 34WQHD 240C. This beautifully designed monitor comes with a top-of-the-line 34-inch QD OLED panel with a subtle 1800R curve and ultra-wide Quad HD resolution, 240Hz refresh rate, instant response times and a near-perfect color reproduction, making it a great option for anything from fast-paced games to immersion games, from content consumption to content creation. And if you are worried about possible burn-in that is inherent to all OLED panels, Corsair has you covered with a three-year-long warranty that includes burn-in. So if you're looking for a new high-end ultra-wide, please do check out the link in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the end of this video. Uh, if you'd like to see more content like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.